Hi, I'm John Paul Raj and I'm on a mission to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. This is part three on a series of financial mathematics. So if you haven't seen any of the earlier videos before, I'm going to link those videos in the description box below. Be sure to check them out. On this particular video, we're going to talk about how to use the finance solver on the TI Inspire 62 to solve questions related to loans and amortization. Let's start. Amortization is the process of repaying a debt, a loan, a mortgage over a period of time with regular payments. And there are different kinds of questions related to uh, amortization. And this is one question that we're going to take a look at today. A couple can afford to make monthly repayments of $1,500 uh, on a mortgage. The bank is offering a 30-year loan at 11% per annum compounded monthly. Those are the key things to highlight even as you're reading questions. Okay, this is mostly about, you know, uh, people who want to take a house or something like that. Uh, and so, you know, early into their career, maybe they're in the twenties, this couple, they just got married and, you know, they think that they've got 30 years to pay back a loan and they've calculated that they can spare $1,500 to pay the mortgage and then cover up the loan. So they're trying to figure out what is the maximum loan? That's the question. What is the maximum loan the couple can take out with those conditions. All right, let's jump to a calculator and figure this thing out. I'm going to add uh, a calculator page and uh, we're going to use the finance solver. Uh, I'm not going to go through all those fields, what each of those fields mean. I've already made a separate video on each of them. You're just going to go and plug in those values right now. For those of you who haven't seen that, please go ahead and take a look at it. It's very important to understand what each of those fields mean and where do we enter numbers with positive or negative values. So here we go, we've got N, the number of payments. And because it's a 30 year loan, 30 times uh, 12, which is monthly payments, all right? So 30 times 12, we can even enter it as an expression, 30 times 12, all right? That's monthly uh, repayments of 1500 over a 30 year period. So that's 30 times uh, 12. And I'm just going to hit tab, remember? And calculate 360, just like that. The interest is 11% per annum, as they said, so we can leave it uh, unchanged. Present value is what we want to find out, how much loan is possible, right? That's what we want to find out and it's going to come out as positive. You can watch that. Payment is what the couple is going to repay back, all right? Now, this is different from compound interest. In most of the questions on compound interest that we saw in the earlier video, uh, you see that we left this field blank because it didn't apply to those questions. But now, in questions on loan and amortization where you pay back, that's where you have to... Uh, enter something and it's not zero. And because you are paying, the couple has agreed to pay, it needs to be entered with a negative sign. So negative 1500 because they've agreed to pay $1,500 per month. Tab to the next field. Future value needs to be zero because we're trying to see in 30 years, the future value of the loan that they're acquiring is going to become zero, right? Payments per year. Well, that's 12 payments per year because they're going to, uh, uh, they're going to pay back 12 times a year, every month that is, and compounded uh, compounding periods is it's compounded monthly. So again, 12, all right. And the loan usually uh, is paid back at the beginning of each month. So let's try and figure out. Now, if you go to the present value, that's going to give us the maximum value of the loan that this couple is eligible with those given criteria. I'm going, I'm going to hit enter. And there we go. We get 1589 53.35. Let me just enter those numbers as it is here. Okay. So, um, that's in dollars, so it's a uh, 158,953, is it? And I'm going to keep it to three, two, two, two decimal places, that's three, six, okay? So here we go, you can see my work. Uh, so that's the maximum loan that the couple is eligible, 158,953 dollars, 0.36. And if you're the banker and you want to talk to the couple and say, well, you know, you're eligible for something like 159,000, Dollars. Okay, so that's rounded off to the nearest 1,000. Uh, how long will it take? The second part of the question says, how long will it take before they have paid off half the loan? So let's jump back to the calculator again. Uh, what we are going to do is that the future value this time, remember it's going to be half. Okay, we're looking at half, right? So the present value is what we calculate. I'm just going to copy that. The future value we're talking about is going to be half, except that I'm going to put it as divided by two. Okay, so that will calculate uh, half and... Uh, just going to hit shift tab to see what, what that is. That's half the amount, okay? But this needs to be negative because that value still needs to be paid back, 
All right, so it's not going to be zero. So remember, it becomes zero is like after you've paid, right? After every payment that is done. So it's going from negative to zero. That means in that context, this future value still needs to be paid and therefore it is negative. Now we need to calculate N because we're looking at uh, how long. So I, I make my way to N capital N, which is the number of payments. I hit enter and I get 288.066. This is the number of payments, remember, and we're making 12 payments per year. All right, 288. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to hit uh, escape and come to my calculator page. And here I'm going to recall that by hitting variable. That's the bars key. I'm going to recall that by saying, okay, that's tvm.n, which is going to give you the number of payments. And this is uh, rounded off, okay, to two decimal places. And we want to divide this by, uh, this value by uh, payments per year, which is 12 actually. And there you go, you got 24 years, 0 0.01 months, okay? So that is 0 0.01 uh, times 12. What does that work out? Well, that's like saying 24 years. So it'll take 24 years for the couple to pay back half the loan, right? So that's how you have to answer that question. 24, how long will it take before they have paid off uh, half the loan? So you can just say 24 years. Now, while we are on this uh, question where it was rounding off the years and all that, I just want to make a quick correction to a question that I saw in the previous video on compound interest. I'm going to link that. Uh, although I made the correction in the description even before it was uh, uploaded onto YouTube, I noticed the error. Uh, this was a correct answer, by the way, okay? So it came out to something similar, right? 23.19 years it came out, but this is not correct, okay? So I just want to publicly apologize that uh, it came out to 23.19 years, and that 0.19 actually comes out to two months. And I think the days I made a mistake in that, all right? So I did make a mention in the description box, but I thought I should also mention that to you. So why don't I quickly show that to you how it can be converted, all right? So jumping to the calculator, it is 23.19 for that other question. Okay, that is 23.19. And that 0 0.19, uh, when I multiply by 12 to give me the months, it gave me 2.28. And that 0 0.28, I accidentally, by mistake, call it days and it actually is not 28 days it's 0.28 days which if you you know multiply by 30 it has an average of number of days per month you'll get it as only eight days so it's actually 23 years two months and eight days that's what it should have been so i'm just going to make that correction quickly here this is 23 years i wrote and it's not two months uh, it's not three months it's two months so 23 years two months and as we saw, it's about eight days, 8.4. So we can even say eight or nine days. Okay, so eight days is what I'm going to write. Okay, so publicly I'm making that correction because you know that conversion, you should be careful also. Now let's take one more example on loans to understand this finance solver. Okay, banks in India usually offer a housing loan at 6.7% per annum. Okay, so typically it's about 6%, uh, 6, sometimes 7. And we think that, you know, 6.7 is not much, all right? Compounded annually is the more important thing, okay? These things are compounded annually and not based on the amount of loan that you will uh, ask for from the bank. Uh, how much would you actually end up paying at the end of the loan period? So let's just say that you want to buy a housing loan and you're quite young and you think that you've got enough time. Uh, let's say in your 20s, you've taken a housing loan and you wanted a loan for um, 60 lakhs, 50 lakhs, okay, let's just keep it 50 lakhs, okay? INR, 50 lakhs and yeah, that's 50 lakhs, uh, Indian rupees, that is. And uh, that's to be computed at 6.7% uh, per annum compounded monthly. So you take in 50 uh, lakhs and you think that, okay, that's 6, 7%, something like that. So let's just see what the calculator has to say. Jumping to the calculator, I'm going to add a new uh, problem to figure this thing out. Uh, here we go. And uh, let's add the calculator page. And uh, the finance solver is here. So let's just say that unlike the earlier couple, you want to pay back that loan in 20 years, all right? So 20 times 12, because it's monthly payments, right? And when you go hit tab, it'll be 240 interest. Let's just enter 6.7 as it is. Uh, that's percent per annum. Present value is the loan money that you're going to get, right? That's why the money is coming into your hands. Cash is coming into your hands, uh, into your account. So that has to be entered positive. So 50, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, all right? That's 50 lakhs. Payment per month, we don't know. So we are going to leave it blank. We're going to come to that, okay? And the future value of the loan must be zero because when you pay back, pay back, pay back, eventually at the end of those 20 years, it needs to be zero. 
payments per year is going to be 12 and this is compounded monthly so again 12 and the payment has to be done at the start of the uh, month is that right so we've got all the fields and we're going to work out uh, the payment so we are going to make our way to this cell and here we are going to hit enter and that tells us that every month you will be paying 37,000 and yeah about 38,000 rupees every month you'll have to pay 38,000 rupees as the EMI for the loan that you've taken okay 37,000 now that's going to be for every month and for how many years about 20 years okay so let's try and work out how much do you actually spend okay how much do you actually pay back all right that's what's the question right how much do you actually at the end of the loan period so i'm going to hit escape i'm going to go to the vars key and from the vars key i'm going to get the payment now remember that was the per month so that's showing negative because that's the money that you are going to pay the money is going to leave your hands the next variable that we're going to call is um, n right the total number of such payments all right so you're going to have 240 as we saw in that finance solver let's try and see all right if you were to multiply these two you're going to get a neg negative value all right so multiply this by this and that should say you'd end up paying is that 90 lakhs yeah 90 lakhs and something like that all right so i'm just going to put down that number and you have asked the bank uh, some 50 lakhs right and you end up paying that was you know at the end of the loan period you end up paying uh, inr 90 38 uh, what is that 267.34 all right that is what you end up paying to the bank so at the end of the loan period you actually end up paying the 50 lakhs that you borrowed and an additional 40 lakhs okay so that's worth thinking about that this looks very small 6.7 you know when you think of a loan 6.7 okay that looks small but this being compounded monthly all right and actually you end up paying a lot more than what you have taken but you can also argue the other way around and say that well you didn't have 50 lakhs with you at that point of time and you needed to buy that house you need to make that down payment whatever that was and the bank gave you in one go so depending upon which side of that compounding interest situation you are you would be smiling at the end of that 20 years okay so in this case the bank is receiving that 40 lakhs extra 40 lakhs they would be smiling but in a situation of uh, let's say annuity when you make an investment and you're going to get that kind of compound interest at the end of those many years you'd be the smiling person and we'll take a look at those kind of questions in another video in the next video we're going to talk about amortization tables see you in that one <music>